Grab your Bibles tonight, if you will. Cody, thank you. Worship team, thank you. I want you to go to 2 Timothy. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Thank, very thankful for our worship encounter here at Victory. Um, if you come to Victory, it's not about being entertained. It's about ministering unto the Lord. Amen. So thankful for our worship here. 2 Timothy chapter 1. For the next few moments... I want to speak to you on the subject of breaking intimidation and witchcraft. I want to speak to you tonight about breaking intimidation and witchcraft. I want you to take some notes tonight. We're going to use our Bibles tonight, amen, but I want you to take some notes. I want you to be ready to receive. Father, we thank you for the power of and the authority of the Word of God. May your Word, Lord, run through this house like a mighty fire. I just bless your spirit tonight to receive the Word of the Lord, every one of you. I bless your spirit man to stand at attention and receive the voice of the Lord, the heart of the Lord, the strengthening of the Lord. May the Lord sharpen your discernment tonight. May the Lord sharpen, sharpen your discernment tonight. May the Lord open your spiritual eyes, open your prophetic vision. I bless you tonight to receive this word from the Lord. And Father, I thank you that you have called me to be your messenger especially, Lord, in this crucial, urgent hour of 2021 here in America and the nations. I thank you, Father. I thank you. May your word pierce us tonight, and may your word heal us tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. 2 Timothy chapter 1, in verse 7, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Come on, let's say it tonight. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power of love and of a sound mind. Say it again. You sound good tonight. I want to tell you where this message began. It began very early in the morning hours today. I read an article, a very interesting article, about the Minnesota Vikings in the NFL, the Minnesota Vikings head coach. Head coach that they demanded him to get the vaccination. And the head coach refused and said, I will never get the vaccination. He was fired from his job. A faithful man, a loyal head coach, faithful worker, diligent, excellent, a professional, said, I will not take this vaccination. And they fired him as the head coach of the Minnesota Vikings. This week, the NFL... And if you don't care about the NFL, just stay with me. I promise it's going to get better tonight. (laughs) You're like, who cares, Brian? I want you to stay with me. (laughs) The NFL this week are demanding that all players get vaccinated. And now, now they're saying if a player doesn't get vaccinated, he will personally be fined. And also they will begin to find the entire team over individual players who will not be vaccinated. I want to tell you what that is. It's called intimidation. I want to tell you it's leveraging intimidation that if you're going to if you're going to be a part of what we're doing, you better hear this in the spirit tonight, you better play by our rules. 
Are you hearing what I'm saying? If you're going to play our game, if you're going to play in the game, you're going to play by our rules. Now, let me just switch over here. This week, Alabama governor, her name is Kay Ivey. She is a Republican, Kay Ivey, Alabama governor, Republican. There's been a surge in COVID cases in the state of Alabama. She said this week, and I quote, it is time to start blaming the unvaccinated folks. Now, I'm going somewhere tonight. I want to talk to you tonight about breaking intimidation and breaking witchcraft. Are you going to strap in and go with me tonight? For real. We have to understand, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, this is the spirit of this age. The spirit of this age right now that is trying to intimidate, that is trying to manipulate, that is trying to dominate. It is the spirit of this age, and it is the exact opposite of the Holy Spirit. Are you here tonight? The spirit of this age says to you, I will bully you. The spirit of this age says, I will intimidate you. I will dominate you. I will manipulate you until you surrender, until you submit to my demands and my control. That is the spirit of this age. I could share dozens of stories tonight. I could share hundreds of stories tonight, tonight, over this agenda. Lives are being destroyed. Businesses are being destroyed. It's amazing that entire governments in the earth are bowing down to a spirit of intimidation. And attached to that spirit, attached to that spirit of intimidation is a spirit of witchcraft. Are you with me tonight? I want to tell you, as Christians, as churches, in this most critical, urgent, burning hour, you have to be a man of God and a woman of God that is going to stand up against the spirit of intimidation. You're going to have to stand your ground. I've said this many times. We've lived in a generation where we've seen prayer after prayer after prayer and people falling down. And I love all of that if it's real. I'll tell you what will never happen in this church. You will never be pushed down. But also if God sticks you to the ceiling, I won't be pulling you off. I give you my word. I give you my word. We have lived in a generation where we've seen a lot of people fall down. But I want to tell you in this hour, the Holy Spirit wants to empower you with with His power and anointing so much that while everyone else is bowing down, you will have an anointing to stand in the day of evil. you got to be able to stand, brother. In this day of evil, you got to be able to stand. You got to be able to stand your ground against the spirit of intimidation. You need an anointing. You need a wisdom from God. An anointing and a wisdom from God. And you may be saying to, well, that's easy for you to say, Brian. You, you, your job is in the church. You're not out there in the marketplace and out there in the jobs. And you don't understand all the pressures Brother, you're wrong. I do understand all of the pressures, and I'm engaged in everybody's lives that I'm looking at, and far more, and I understand the pressures out in the marketplace. I also understand the pressure in the pulpits, and sadly to say, I have watched incredible people in the ministry succumb and break down under a spirit of intimidation. And where there was once anointing, where there was once power, where there was once a flow of God, now has become sterile, now has become barren. 
I've watched preachers go completely silent, not be able to say a thing to people. Why? They came up against the spirit of intimidation. They came up against the spirit of witchcraft against them. Are you with me tonight? How are you going to be able to stand in this hour? How are you going to be able to prevail against a spirit of intimidation overtaking you? It's not by you running to a a good meeting and having someone famous lay their hands on you. It's not how it happens. Sorry to disappoint you. It's about spending quality time with Jesus in His Word, time in prayer, time in worship, and developing your inner man, your inner life, your inner world. It's about developing your inner world so that you can stand against all the wiles of the devil in this hour. Are you with me? Are you with me? You have to develop your inner life so much so that you literally become like a sword. You become like a sword. Oh, thank you, Father. Like a sword that becomes sheathed in the fire of the Spirit. The battle of intimidation is very real. And I will tell you that no one is exempt from this battle. No one. No one is exempt from this battle. Those of you watching me online, I don't know who you are. I have no way of seeing who that is. But I want to say to you, no one is exempt from this battle of intimidation and witchcraft. Hallelujah. But the good news is there is victory in the Lord. I've seen too many good men fall. I've seen too many good women fall. Amazingly, those that once really burned for God somehow become these these nice uh, little sweet domesticated cats. I want to tell you that a lion a lion doesn't give birth to domesticated house cats. Are you hearing me tonight? There are many, there are many who are called, they're called right now into this great end time army. Many that are called into this great time army, but they are presently bound by a spirit of intimidation. They have pure hearts towards God. They have pure hearts towards men. They're like Gideon of old, but they're held captive by the fear of man. Are you with me tonight? They're held captive. They're held captive by the fear of man. Like Gideon of old, hiding out the gifts that God has placed on the inside of them. The great treasure within their earthen vessels is lying dormant because of intimidation and witchcraft. Those who will get with God in this last hour, and we are in the last days, brother, you mark it down. Those who will get with God will step forward, and they will do the greatest exploits and wonders the earth has ever seen. The greatest outpouring of the Holy Ghost is about to hit this earth. Mark it down. Mark it down. We've already stepped into the beginning phases of it. This message is for every one of you tonight. This message isn't for somebody else you're thinking about. This message is for every person in this church, those of you watching online, and those of you that are going to grab a hold of this on VictoryFLA.com months from now, and you're going to click on it, and you're going to find it. This message is for you tonight. We have to break free from the root of intimidation. 
We've got to expose ourselves so much to the presence of God that He's able to rem remove and uproot out of us every level of insecurity. You have to expose yourself to the raw flame and power of God, the presence of God, so much that God has the ability to uproot the insecurity out of you. That's why it's so important that you're in a burning church like this. This is why we're not, this is why we're not afraid to worship for an hour and a half. Because when we get before God and we start singing, Lord, I give you my heart. I open my heart to you. I consecrate my heart to you. I'm telling you what. You're going to see the fruit. You're going to see the most dynamic, powerful fruit breaking forth in your life. And you're going to start listening to yourself as you go out in public. And you're going to be hearing yourself saying words of power, words that have anointing on them. You're going to see yourself stretching forth your hand to lay hands on the sick, to pray, to deliver people from tormenting spirits. Second Timothy 1.7 God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power of love and of a sound mind. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are a powerful person. I'm here to remind you tonight as your leader, you are not weak. You are not insecure. You are not frail. I'm here to remind you tonight, you are powerful in God. God has given you a spirit of power. God has given you a sound, sharp mind to understand, to discern, to have wisdom, to have knowledge, to have revelation. Your mind, God wired your mind to be renewed to your true identity. When you walk in your true identity, hallelujah, as a son and daughter, you're going to overcome every wile of the devil. It's high time that you walk in your authority. It's high time that you walk. You may want to write it down. It's high time I start walking in my authority. Because I want to tell you tonight, flat-footed, if you don't walk in your authority, If you don't walk in your authority in this hour, someone will steal it from you and they will use it against you. Are you here? Are you breathing? You better go the distance with me tonight. Intimidation, write it down. Intimidation, you know what it means? Intimidation means to make someone timid. It means to cause someone to be anxious or fearful. It means to suppress someone. It's the action of intimidating someone by frightening them, scaring them, alarming them, terrifying them. To be in a state of intimidation. It breaks a person down to bully them into silence. Are you with me tonight? What does it mean, intimidation? It means to make one timid, to make someone anxious or fearful, to suppress them. The action of intimidating them by frightening them, scaring them, alarming them. Are, 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 you, seeing, are you seeing the strategy of the enemy over just the last year and a half all over the world with these words? Are you seeing it? It breaks a person down. The spirit of intimidation is released against a person to break them down. The spirit of intimidation is released against a person to silence them. It's called domination. It's a form of witchcraft. Are you hearing me? 
It's a form of witchcraft. And what happens in a life, if you don't deal with this, and I'm going to give you tools tonight to deal with it. Ha <laughs> ha, yes. If you don't deal with it, what will happen is beyond being timid, beyond being squashed, beyond moving into a place of anxiety, something else will begin to form and it will become a stronghold. And those strongholds look like a place, of, a place called depression. Are you hearing me? A stronghold will be established after intimidation breaks somebody down. Weathers down a man of God, weathers down a staff, weathers down a church where you walk in and you're like, oh my God, where did God go? Where they've been under the gavel, the gavel. There's so many preachers in America under the gavel of the spirit of intimidation and witchcraft. You need to be quiet. You shouldn't be speaking about this. You're not to go into the realm of politics. It really doesn't matter who's in the White House. It really doesn't matter who's in the Senate. It really doesn't matter who's in the Congress. We're the church. Yeah, we're the church. And look at the state of America. And the devil keeps on discipling America while the church has been weak and limp and lame. But things are about to change. Oh, yes, lambs are becoming lions. <laughs> I want you to write it down in your notes Daniel chapter 6. This is your study this week. Daniel chapter 6. Put it in your notes and read it later this week. Daniel is in captivity. Yet he is leading powerfully because he fears God. Daniel, the prophet, he fears God. God's presence is so strong on Daniel. The presence of the Lord is so amplified over his life. Why? Because he was a man of burning prayer and intimacy. And so what happens is, is Darius is the king. Now we know that Daniel's in captivity but Darius, the king, he sees the amplified presence of God on this wild man, this awesome man named Daniel. And so what happens is, is Darius decides to make Daniel a leader. Did you hear what I said? He sees the presence. He doesn't know what it is. He doesn't know it's the anointing. He just says there's something about that guy. There's just something about that guy. There's just something about that guy. It's the anointing. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It's the anointing. And Darius saw the anointing, the presence and the power of God on Daniel's life. And he decided to raise him up and become a leader. But unfortunately, what we learn is that there are other leaders around Daniel. And they begin to conspire against him. And they begin to manipulate King Darius. So intimidation comes in. Leveraging. Are you hearing what I'm saying? They start leveraging. Leveraging his personality. Leveraging. They start making up stories about, oh, there's scandal in the streets about Daniel, about who he is and who he really is and who, he, he, who he's really not. And who he is and who he might be and who he's not and who he is and who he might be. They start just Corrupting all their own scuttlebutt. That's what losers do. That's what losers do. They just spin their wheels and scuttlebutt. Little busybodies. Big mouths, big busybodies. And so here's Daniel walking in the anointing. He's in prayer. He's in intercession. God elevates him. God raises him up. But other leaders begin to conspire Against him. Can I just stop? This, this, this message ain't about me, but I can just tell you. I, I can tell you about something. I've lost a lot of friends. 
You know, a lot of people like me, and a lot of people are my friends, but I can tell you something else. I've lost a lot of friends. Maybe you have too. I've seen a lot of people get lost in the scuttlebutt, lost in the stuff that doesn't even matter. Doesn't even matter. They're majoring in the minors. They're not even in the flow of what God is doing in this hour. They're so lost, so lost, pitifully lost. Again, people that once loved God, served God, now not even serving God, out getting drunk. Out getting drunk, out committing fornication, out committing adultery on their wife or their husband. People that once loved God, are you hearing me? I'm telling you, no one is exempt from the test of intimidation and of witchcraft. Are you hearing what I'm saying tonight? My God. So Daniel's thrown where? He's thrown in the lion's den. And then God shows up. But they tried to use witchcraft against him and intimidation. They tried to leverage their intimidation with Darius. Genesis, I'm sorry, Genesis, help me, Jesus. Galatians chapter 3. I want you to write it down tonight. Galatians chapter 3. The Bible talks about witchcraft as a work of the flesh. The Bible talks, listen, about witchcraft as a work of the flesh. Galatians chapter 3, verse 1. The Apostle Paul, listen, the, the Apostle Paul, he is coming on strong here. He's coming in hot, okay? He says, oh, you foolish Galatians. Now, I, I can shout that because it has an exclamation point on the end of it. Does everybody see that? <laughs> He's coming in hot. Oh, you foolish Galatians. I mean, can you imagine that? Oh, you foolish Victorians. Are you with me tonight? Who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed amongst you as crucified. Now, in Galatians, you see where Paul is going. You can read the chapters. You've read them many times, or maybe this is brand new to you. As you begin to read it, you start understanding that Paul is so upset that they are actually leaving the gospel of grace that saved them, and they are now moving back into the lifeless power of the law, and it bewitched them. Who has bewitched you? The essence of witchcraft, write it down, is control. The essence of witchcraft is control. And it is sent forth to dominate you. And this is why Paul said, who has bewitched you? That you don't believe the right thing anymore. Witchcraft comes to intimidate you. Witchcraft comes to dominate you. Witchcraft comes to manipulate you. And the ultimate end game, the ultimate end game of a spirit of intimidation or control is to dominate the child of God and rob them of their authority. That's the end game. That is the end game. It is to rob you of your God-given authority. Are you with me tonight? Now, this is why you have to recognize witchcraft. This is, how, this is why you have to discern and recognize a spirit of intimidation working against you. And folks, it is plaguing America right now. You think this is vital, what we're talking about tonight? No, really. Do you think this is vital, what we're talking about? No, it's very vital. This is plaguing the United States of America. And again, businesses are bowing down and worshiping at the altar of intimidation. The NFL, they're bowing down to it. You've got it. I know you've got it. I know, I know this. I know you. I know you, and you know me, and I know you, and you know me. Okay, so we got that. Here's what's imperative. <laughs> you and I have to dwell in our place, our spiritual place, and our spiritual position of God-given authority with the Lord. You have to live and dwell 
in your God-given place of authority that the Lord gave you. And that is being seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus so that the enemy is still under your feet. Now, I can't go down this road long because we've got a long ways to go tonight. And I promise to have you out by 1 a.m. God ultimately restored our authority. Listen, God ultimately restored our authority to rule and to reign over the enemy, to reign over sin through sending Jesus. Because Jesus came to destroy all the works of the devil and regain the authority that the first Adam lost. The first Adam succumbed and surrendered his authority over to Satan. That's why Satan said to Jesus in the wilderness, if you will just bow down and worship me, I will give you all the authority of, the, of the, all these kingdoms that you can see. He wasn't lying. He had the authority to give. Why? Because Adam turned over the authority and the dominion to this earth realm. But the word says that Jesus was our last Adam. And he came and he whipped the devil. He whipped him. And he stripped him. He stripped him of the authority. And he took it back. And he freely gave that authority unto his bride, his church, his sons and daughters. Come on. Come on. Shout amen. Matthew 28. Matthew 28 and verse 18. This is after the cross. This is after the resurrection. Jesus said, he came and he spoke to them, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations. All authority has been given unto me. That's why you can go, because I've given you my authority. You see it? Do you see it? In order to defeat intimidation, you're going to have to walk daily in your God-given authority that Jesus gave you. Anyone can be affected by intimidation. Even a mighty prophet, and I want you to go to 1 Kings chapter 19 quickly. 1 Kings 19. Anyone can be affected. Even a mighty prophet named Elijah was affected. On the other side of Mount Carmel's victory, where the fire came down from heaven, it consumed the sacrifice. The fire of the Lord consumed it. I, I have stood in that place, and many of you that I took to Israel stood in that place on Mount Carmel where the fire of the Lord came down and consumed it and where Elijah killed 450 false prophets of Baal and 450 false prophets of Ashtra. I've stood on that mountain. But on the other side of that, on the other side, stay with me tonight. I've got a long ways to go. I, I really want you to stay with me tonight. On the other side of the greatest victory of Elijah's life, where the fire of the Lord comes, something happens where he is confronted by King Ahab's wife. Her name is who? Her name is Jezebel. On the very same day, listen to this, on the very same day after the victory, what happens is, is that Jezebel gets word of what has happened to her false prophets. And before their blood is drying on the ground, she sends a message. It's not Twitter. It's not Facebook. It's not a Gmail. No, she sends a message because it says, and when Elijah saw it, and we're going to see it in just a second, she sends a message. And when she sends this message, actually everything begins to turn. Are you in 1 Kings 19? All right, three of you. Are you in, are you in 1 Kings 19? Okay, here we go. Verse 2. Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah, saying, So let the gods do to me, and more also, if I don't make your life as the life of one of them by tomorrow this time. Read verse 3. Look at that. And when he saw it, 
he arose and he ran for his life. You know what that is? That's intimidation and witchcraft. That's intimidation and witchcraft. It, fear came on Elijah. Can you believe that? After he's just been down in a, in a position of birthing, calling forth, asking God, send your fire, send your fire, send your fire. Now he gets a, he gets a letter. She says, by this time tomorrow, I'm going to have killed you. A letter from the devil. Fear. Fear comes in. Anxiety comes in. What's she doing? Intimidation. Intimidation produces what? Anxiety. Fear. It starts suppressing him like a python. It's suppressing him. All the strength in him is now like withering out of him. His confidence is just fleeting. Nowhere to be found. No confidence. Amazingly, he did not want to face Jezebel. Isn't that interesting? Didn't want to face her. Isn't it amazing that he wanted to get out from under the pressure that he was feeling? Have you ever felt like that? You just, I'm going to try this side. Have you ever felt like that? You just wanted to, you wanted to do anything to get out from underneath the pressure that you're under. All right, we've got some more honest people in the room. You know, I mean, I mean, amazingly, you would think that you would think the scriptures would read like this. At this point, Elijah read her message. He grabbed his Motorola flip phone and uh, dialed her digits and he called her and said, hey, witch. Hey, devil. That sounds really good. For those of you that are watching online, the rain is starting to pour in Sarasota, Florida. Hallelujah. Hey, witch. Yeah, you. You know, hey, witch. Hey, devil. Yeah, I'm talking to you. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's not static. That's just stench of your prophets I just killed. Go ahead and meet me up here on the mountain, big mouth, and we'll have a little chat. That's not what happened. Why in the world... All of a sudden, he's suppressed. He has no confidence. He has fear on him. He has no confidence. He has no confidence. Are you seeing what's going on and plaguing our generation right now? No confidence. It's like a spirit has come in and just neutered the church. Men can't even stand boldly. Righteously, full of the fire of God, and face a devil head on and call him out and say, no, you're not going to do this to our city. No, you're not going to do this to our children. No, you're not going to teach this perversion to our kids. Are you hearing me tonight? Are you hearing the Lord? It's amazing. Suppressed, no confidence, anxiety, fear, fear. A mentor in my life years ago, I'll never forget it, Shane. He said, Brian, tell me who controls the church. We were out together one day. I said, what? That rain sounds really cool. He said, Brian, tell me who controls the church. I said, I don't know, Pastor. Tell me. Tell me who controls the church. He said, the person who controls the church is whoever the pastor or the shepherd or the leader is afraid of. That is who controls the church. And then he went on and he said, as long as you will always fear the Lord... You're going to be just fine in the ministry. You're going to be just fine. So he took off. Elijah took off. And I'm in verse 3. He ran to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah. Are you there? He left the servant there. Verse 4. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness 
And he came and he sat down under a broom tree and he prayed. This is crazy. He prayed that he might die. And he said, it's enough. It's enough now. Lord, take my life for I'm no better than my father's. Are you getting this? This is intimidation and witchcraft. It will make you so depressed you will want to die. Intimidation and witchcraft will make you so depressed you will want to die. You will want to die early. This is amazing. You'll want to give up instead of suiting up in the full armor of God and taking on the devil. You'll want to run. You'll want to run. You'll want to flee. You'll want to hide. And then, verse 5, he lay and he slept under the broom tree. Suddenly an angel came and touched him and said, Elijah, rise and eat. And then he looked, and there by his head was a, a cake baked on the coals. And there was a jar of water. And so he ate and drank, and he laid down. How are we doing, guys? Is our live stream still up? Hallelujah. Everybody pray for our live stream tonight. We don't want this to be knocked out by the storm. I'm serious. This needs to get out to people. I'm tired of our live stream going down. This needs to get out to people. And that has nothing to do with those guys. It has to do with storms. So then the angel touched him. He said, arise and eat. And then he looked. He saw, he saw the cake baked on the coals, a jar of water. So he ate and he drank. He laid down. And the angel of the Lord came back a second time and touched him and said, arise and eat. Because the journey is too great for you. It's so great for you. So he rose, he ate, and he drank. Watch this. And he went in the strength of that food 40 days and 40 nights. Wow. On one meal from God, 40 days, 40 nights. Sound familiar? Ah, oh, now you're tracking. As far as Horeb, the mountain of God. Now do the math. What is Horeb? What is the mountain of God? It's Mount Sinai. Are you with me? Here we go. Watch this. Verse 9. There he went into a cave. He spent the night in that place, and behold, the word of the Lord came to him. And he said, watch this. What are you doing here, Elijah? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. What a question. What are you doing here? Are, are you catching this? He surrendered his God-given authority. And when you surrender your God-given authority, what happens is, is you end up in the wrong place. He went a direction that God didn't desire for him to go. You know that most theologians, you study this out. This is fascinating. Most theologians believe, and I'm not saying that I'm a theologian. Most theologians believe that this cave where Elijah ran to on Horeb, Mount Sinai, was the very place that Moses was inside with God when he gave him the Ten Commandments. Powerful. Powerful. Verse 10, are you still with me? And so he said, I have been, Here, here's Elijah's response. You ready for this? Guys, are you still with me? I've been very zealous for you, Lord God of hosts. For the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant. They tore down your altars. They killed your prophets with swords. I am the only one left. And they seek to take my life. And then he said, God said to him, go out. Stand on the mountain before the Lord, and behold, the Lord passes by. Is this, are you remembering this? This is right where, remember, somebody else was told that. Moses, stand out here, and I'm going to pass before you. Are you hearing this? Are you with me? I'm going to go out, and I'm going to pass in front of you. And a great and strong wind tore the mountain and broke the rocks into pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, there was an earthquake. And the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, there was a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. 
And after the fire, a still small voice. And so it was when Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle. Oh, my God, I want to preach that tonight. i got to stay on track. And he went and stood in the entrance of the cave, and suddenly a voice came to him and said, What are you doing here, Elijah? And so he says again, verse 14, I've been very zealous for you, Lord God. Can you, can you hear this? Can you feel what he's feeling? I've been very zealous for you, God. The children of America, they have forsaken you. The children of America, they have forsaken their covenant with you. Are you, are you feeling this? They've tore down your altars. They've killed your prophets with the sword. And I'm left. And they seek to take my life. Watch this. Verse 15. Three more verses. The Lord said to him, Lord, thank you for this storm. This is awesome. Go and return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. That's there in Syria, right? And when you arrive, I want you to anoint Haziel as the king over Syria. And you shall anoint Jehu, the son of Nimshi, as the king over Israel. And Elisha, the son of Saphat, of Abel, Mahola. And you shall, watch this, and you shall anoint as prophet, read the next three words, in your Did you catch that? Did you catch that? Those are some strong, deep, gravity words. You ran. You ran. You feared. You took on her intimidation. You let her letter. You let her letter talk you out of who you really are. You ran. You became weak. You were suppressed. You were intimidated. You cowered down. You ran. Now you're in such a bad place, I have to anoint someone else to take your God-given place of authority. That is happening in the church right now. It's happening in the church universally. There are others that God is rising up right now to take the place of those that have been terribly unfaithful. Verse 18, uh, verse 17, anoint Jehu, whoever escapes the sword of Jehu, Elisha will kill. Oh, I love that. Yet, I have reserved 7,000 in Israel, all whose knees have not bowed to veil, to Baal and every mouth that has not kissed him. Did you see what God is ending with? You, you have been so low, so depressed, so intimidated, so overcome by witchcraft, you think you've actually been standing alone, but God says, I've had 7,000 others that have been consecrated to me that never bowed their knee to Baal. You know, intimidation can spin you out. You think I'm just preaching this to you that I haven't felt the effects of intimidation? Oh, I'm preaching what I have lived. I'm not guessing at this, my friend. I'm not guessing in the dark. This isn't theory. This class is a class of revelation. Every one of us have been touched by intimidation. Every one of us has been leveraged by domination. Every one of us have been leveraged by manipulation. You need to see it for what it really is. Why am I bringing this point out to you tonight? Why am I bringing all this up? I'm glad you've asked. Because when you look into the scriptures, this is what you find. There are a lot of people in the Bible who instead of pressing forward, they fell back behind and they never went into their God-given promise and destiny. This must never be your story. This must never be your story. 
1 Corinthians chapter 10. Go there with me. I'm just about done. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. My friend, I want to tell you, don't you dare back down and be bullied by intimidation. Remember this message. Remember when your pastor looked at you, encouraged you, poured this word over you, and told you, don't you back down. Don't you back down. It's time to advance and move forward. Don't succumb to a spirit of intimidation. Don't you dare do it. The Apostle Paul said, are you there? 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 11. Now all these things happened to them as, an, as examples, and they were written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the ages had come. What am I saying to you? All of these things that we are reading, guys, this is for our example so that we don't forget how some people failed in the journey. This is supposed to shoot revelation into your soul so that you don't give up because the days are so bleak, so dark, so disastrous. You've got to be able to open the scriptures and see how God can take you in his grip, anoint you to overcome witchcraft and intimidation. But you don't understand, Brian. My reputation is on the line. I know it is. But you don't understand, Brian. My job is on the line. Oh, I know it is. My ministry is on the line. My life is on the line. So is yours. So is yours. This is the hour of extreme testing. I mean, guys, we can't act like we're just sitting here insulated and all is well and all is good while, while Canadian pastors are being hunted down like criminals. Canadian pastors being hunted down like criminals for having services outside in the woods. Everything's on the line. Everything's on the line. Things may so drastically shift in America that we may be changing radically how we do church. That's right. We're not going to back down. Tom Petty should write a song. No, I won't back down. Come on. No, I'll stand my ground. You can stand me up at the gates of hell, but I. Hey, baby, there ain't no easy way out. Okay, so we're back. Okay. <laughs> okay, we're really back to the message. Sorry. And that wasn't in my notes. Jesus, help me. I want to say over you tonight, do the right thing. Sounds too simple. Do the right thing. At every, 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 every juncture, every crossroad, every decision, do the right thing. Be courageous. Have integrity. Speak with wisdom. Stand your ground. Do the right thing. Ephesians 4.27. Paul says, give no place to the devil. I want you to say it tonight. Give no place to the devil. Say it again. Give no place to the devil. Is our live stream working? Are we, are we good? Those of you that are watching online, I want you to shout, give no place to the devil. I think I heard them. I think I heard them. Yeah. All right. So we're going to wrap it up. Are you ready? When you face intimidation, when inti intimidation comes to bully you, when it comes to silence you, Doug, when they come to suppress you, Tina, when they come to rob your confidence, Sarah, what are you going to do? I said, what are you going to do? Number one, are you ready? 
I'm giving you number one. Are you ready? You're taking notes. Take authority immediately over it in the name of Jesus. That's number one. Take authority immediately over it in the name of Jesus. Luke chapter 10, verse 19. Jesus said, Behold, I give you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions over all the power of the enemy. That includes intimidation, manipulation, domination, witchcraft, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. You see that? Number one, take your authority over it immediately. Use the name of Jesus. Stand. Take authority immediately. Number two, you ready? Number two, don't back up. Stand secure and confident. Don't back up. Stand secure and confident in the full armor of God. Stand secure knowing, knowing what? That God is backing you. Somebody in here tonight needs reminded God backs you. Somebody in here also needs to hear God's holy angel armies are backing you. God's angel armies back you. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 14. Are you feeling this, Diane? I see you back there. Are you feeling this? Hebrews 1.14 are they, the angels, not ministering spirits sent forth to minister to those who will inherit salvation? That's you and me. There are angels on assignment. Glory to God. Glory to God. God backs you. God backs you up. His holy angel armies back you up. There are ministering spirits always with you. Remember that. Remember that. Number three, remember this. Greater is he that is within you than he that is in the world. Go to 1 John chapter 4. Put it on the screen, guys. 1 John chapter 4, verse 1. Beloved, do not believe every spirit. Say it with me. Beloved, do not believe every spirit. Say it again. Beloved, do not believe every spirit. But test the spirits, whether they are from God, because many false prophets have gone into the world. Hello, are you breathing in 2021? I'd say there's a lot of false prophets. I'd say there's a lot of prophets we don't even need to listen to anymore. <laughs> yep. Many false prophets have gone into the world. But by this, you will know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh, and every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of Antichrist, which you heard it was coming and is now already in the world. You are of God, little children, and have, oh, say it, overcome them. Because he who is in you is greater than he that is in the world. I want you to, I want you. I don't know what I just did there, but I felt like a Texan or something. Kicking a, kicking a, a bowl. <laughs> I want you to say this tonight, and I want you to mean it. I want you to declare this. Hell cannot stop me. Now let it settle down into your spirit. Hell cannot stop me. Number four, remember this and declare this. Second Timothy 1 Timothy 1.7, God has not given me a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. That means you are powerful. That means you are powerful. That means you are enveloped and you are wrapped in the love of God and you have clarity of mind. You have clarity of thought. 
Because, remember, a spirit of intimidation and witchcraft will try to jumble your brains like stew. You don't even know who you are anymore. You don't even know where you're going anymore. You can end up in the wrong place. You speak over yourself. You step back. You gather yourself and you remind yourself. And you're going to be in some very precarious situations in the near future. And you're going to have to remind yourself, God has given me a spirit of love, of power, and of a sound mind. I have clarity. Now, let me tell you what a sound mind is. Isaiah 11 and verse 2. A sound mind is this. It's the Holy Spirit. Listen. The Holy Spirit is this. He is the spirit of wisdom. He is the spirit of understanding. Right? Are you with me? He is the spirit of counsel. He is the spirit of revelation. He is the spirit of might. He's the spirit of knowledge. He's the spirit of the fear of the Lord. That's who the Holy Spirit is. When I say... When I say that you have a sound mind, that means your mind can receive sudden revelation by the Spirit of the Lord. The spirit of knowledge is what? You will know what you need to know when you need to know it. You will know what you need to know when you need to know it. The Holy Spirit will breathe His counsel into you. You'll have a sharp mind and suddenly you'll have counsel. You'll have revelation. You'll have understanding. Suddenly, suddenly, you'll have the wisdom. Because the Spirit of God, God is not giving you a spirit of fear. He's giving you a spirit of love, power, a sound mind, a sound mind, a clear mind, a mind that can discern revelatory things. And up out of your spirit will flow revelation, a word of knowledge, a word of wisdom, a word of counsel. Are you, are you still with me? You getting this? This is good. Number five, stir up the gift within you by praying in the Spirit. Jude one twenty. Jude one twenty. Stir up the gift in you by praying in the Spirit. But you, beloved, building yourselves up in your most holy faith, praying in the Spirit. Look at it again. Building yourself up in your most holy faith by praying in the Spirit. The Spirit. You get in these scenarios and situations, beloved, that's why you need a fresh baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire. You need a fresh baptism of the Holy Spirit and fire. 99% of the church in America, you're not going to hear this message because they've thrown this message completely out. Why? They can do church without the Holy Spirit. They don't need the Holy Spirit. They've created a system and a function where he's not even needed. That's why it's so barren and sterile. And that's why God's throwing it away. You need a fresh baptism of the Holy Spirit and fire. So you can pray in the Spirit. And when you start praying in the Spirit, building up your most holy faith, you know what happens? Your mind becomes sharp. Your spirit man becomes sharp. All the spiritual dullness begins to drain out. All the spiritual fogginess begins to go away. God starts sharpening you when you're praying in the Holy Ghost and with fire. Am I helping you tonight? Number six. Jesus said concerning opposition... Watch this. Matthew 10, verse 19. He says, but when they deliver you up, do not worry about how you should speak. For it will be given to you in the hour, in that hour, what you should speak. That means you need to lean into the Lord for what you need in the moment. Are you getting this? You need to lean into the Lord what you need in that moment. You're going you're gonna to come up against more opposition. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be faced with more opposition. But I'm not to worry. You understand? You're not to worry. I'm not to worry. Because I'm going to know what to say when I'm supposed to say it. I'm going to know when to speak. I'm going to know when to keep my mouth shut. That's what a good soldier does. Are you hearing me? 
Luke 21, verse 15. Luke 21, 15. I'm just about there. I know I'm preaching long. Thanks. Jesus said to his disciples, are you ready? For I will give you a mouth and wisdom which your, all your adversaries will not be able to contradict or resist. You see that? Jesus said to his disciples, read it with me. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom which all your adversaries will not be able to contradict or resist. You need to declare it tonight. God puts words of wisdom in my mouth. Say it. God puts words of wisdom in my mouth. And it's like fire in my belly. You seeing it? I'm going to give you a mouth. And I'm going to give you wisdom. Which all of your adversaries, they're not going to be able to contradict. They're not going to be able to resist it. Number seven. God gives you a place and a position. Write it down. God gives me a place and a position. Write it down. God gives me a place and a position. And it sounds something like this. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and be of good courage. Do not be afraid nor be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Have you ever noticed that everywhere that you go, that you're still there? Well, you need to be reminded, everywhere you go tonight, everywhere you go, God goes with you. And he gives you the place of authority. He gives you the place of authority. And here's my last point tonight, number eight. Don't run from devils deal with devils write it down don't run from devils deal with the devils Matthew chapter 10 and verse 8 Jesus said heal the sick cleanse the lepers raise the dead watch what he said cast out demons freely you've received freely give when he said cast out demons i wrote it down in this way this was my language don't run from devils deal with devils we're going to have to learn how to deal with the devil and we're also going to have to learn how to deal with people that are carrying the devils god's given us authority to drive them out cast them out did you hear what i'm saying God's given you authority to drive them out, cast them out. Years ago, we were on a trip to California. My wife and I were heading out. I was going to be preaching for seven weeks in the San Francisco Bay Area at churches all over. We went up and saw Bill and Benny and Redding. It was a phenomenal trip, but we stopped in Salt Lake City. I put Josiah, Josiah was six months old. I put Bren and Josiah into the hotel. I went out to our trailer to grab some stuff, a lot of, a lot of bags. And I'm coming in, and just my last trip, and I get into an elevator. I get into an elevator with this, this guy who was clearly a homosexual. And he and I were in the elevator together. I pushed my button, and I looked at him, and he gave me, he gave me the most snarled, queer look and he wanted he wanted me to see his eyes because he looked me up and down and I heard what he said in his head and I said if you do that to me one more time I'm going to cast those devils out of you right here and right now I'm not trying to sound tough I'm not trying to sound John Wayne I'm just telling you right now, I told him, you do that one more time, I'm going to cast those demons out of you right here, right now. You understand me? It looked, it looked like a, an invisible hand took him and just slammed him to that wall. He was trying to go through that wall to get away from me. You don't run from devils. You deal with them. Guys, devils are manifesting everywhere. 
And we can't be a church that just buries our head in the sand. We insulate ourselves as much as possible. No, 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 no. It's not what happens. God is thrusting the church out into the world. He's thrusting the church out into the world. And a church that has to be ready. A church that has been readied. A church that has been made ready. Lambs that have become lions. Those that aren't afraid. Those that will confront the spirit of manipulation, intimidation, and domination. Those that will confront a spirit of witchcraft and walk in their God-given authority and anointing and power that God has given you. He's given it to you. And now we've got to use it. You're powerful. You're powerful. Christ in you is the hope of this generation. Christ in you is the hope of this generation. God has made you powerful. Don't you forget it. Don't you forget it. Don't you let anybody or anything talk you out of it. Don't be seduced by some dumb religious spirit that wants to cause you right now to get into some false humility right now, that you're just supposed to be indifferent and backwards and not really say anything about what's really happening in our culture right now because God doesn't want the church to go there, and those are scary places. And I don't know why I'm talking like this, but it's, it's kind of weird. I feel like Lance Wall now just came on me or something. <laughs> I'm not channeling anybody. (laughs) That's right. It's so crazy what's happening in the church in this hour. But the good news is, the good news is, the good news is, places like Victory, a church of his presence, all over this country, God's getting his mighty army dressed for battle. There's a mighty army dressed for battle. And he's saying, take the land. Take the land. Come on, Rick Pino. I can hear it in the atmosphere. Take the land. There's an army dressed for battle. Take the land. I want our prayer team to get ready. I've preached my guts out tonight. (laughs) God is good. God is good. God is so good. The presence of the Lord. Listen, all of you that are online, I wish I could I wish I could throw you in a DeLorean. Fire that sucker up to 88 miles per hour and get you in this building for the last three hours. <laughs> it's been so incredible in here, hasn't it? The presence of God is so rich, so tangible, so good. Lord, we want to thank you tonight again. Cody, go ahead and come, buddy. Father, we want to thank you again. For your awesome presence amongst us, God. The privilege of coming and worshiping you tonight. The privilege to giving you our heart all over again. Consecrating our lives unto you again. Thank you. Thank you, Father. We honor you. We love you tonight. I pray, Lord, that as we open these altars, that miracles and healing and salvation... And deliverance happens right here in this place. Salvation, healing and miracles, deliverance tonight. I'd like our prayer team to come. Tonight, if you need, if you're in need, whatever that is, you know what that need is. In just a moment, we're going to open up the altars, and if our prayer team could just come together so we don't have the parting of the Red Sea here.
There we go. We're ready to pray for you. We're ready to minister. We're ready to see the Holy Spirit move. He's not done moving. Hallelujah. Guys, we've only just begun. Do you understand? We're, we're going to move into such a glorious revival. Our services are going to be going past midnight, one in the morning, two in the morning. I'm telling you, you we got to get ready. God's going to give us a campus, and we're going to grow, and we're going to have room to grow. We're going to, I don't know how it's going to happen. I have no clue, but it's going to be a miracle. He's going to get all the glory for it because there's an awakening. There's an outpouring coming. I had a meeting this week I wish I could tell you about, but I can't. Isn't that great? But I sat with some governmental leaders. I sat with church leaders in private, in private. Nobody knew the meeting was happening. Nobody knew the people that were in the room. But it didn't happen in, in Tampa. It didn't happen in Washington, D.C. It happened in Sarasota. It happened right here. And I'm amazed by the things that are getting ready to be loosed on us. There are big, big things coming. And there's also big confrontation over the evil that thinks it can take our city and region. And it can't have our city. Our city belongs to God. Our city belongs to God. Our city will be known as a city of refuge. Our city will be known as a city of revival, a city of awakening, a city of refuge. That's how our city will be known. It'll be known as the city of David. Hallelujah. Father, I just thank you that your anointing is flowing like a river tonight. And I thank you that tonight as we lay hands upon many tonight that need miracles, that miracles will be released and healing will be released. Even now tonight in Sarasota Memorial Hospital over Lois Cable, miracle, glory, and power released. Victory over cancer. In the name of Jesus. Jesus' name. I want you to stand tonight. Tonight is the night to give your life to Jesus. Tonight is to give, is the night to give your heart to Jesus. He's the Lord and He loves you. He loves you. Tonight is the night to give your heart to the Lord. If that is you tonight, you want to give your heart to the Lord. When you come forward, I want you to tell these people, I want to give my heart to Jesus tonight. That's why I've come down. Tell them. If you need a healing in your body, tell them. If you need a miracle, whatever kind of breakthrough you need, let them know and let us pray. You want prayer tonight, I want you to come now. Let's open these altars. Come now for anything. You need prayer tonight, come. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Just come. Step out. Step out from where you're at. Just come now. It's time. It's time. Come now. There you go. Hallelujah. Father, let your power flow now. Jesus' name. We're not in a hurry to leave tonight. We love you. We bless you. The service is probably long from over.